Okay, so today we're going to talk about the line of best fit and the correlation coefficient um, and kind of how the, what these are and what they're used for. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at today is we're going to be looking at a bunch of different points on a graph, which is what we generally call a scatter plot. So we're going to get a bunch of data that both corresponds with like an X and a Y coordinate. So we're going to have basically two different coordinates um, that we can plug in and make a point. Um, but um, what we're going to do after that is we need a line of best fit. That's the average between all these points. Um, in eighth grade, some of you might have – actually, you all did it in eighth grade, yeah. So in eighth grade, we did it. We did it online. I don't know how, much, how, ma how many of you remember that, but – we were basically, we gave you the line in eighth grade and you basically just had to write down the equation for the line. Um, but eighth grade, it was just an estimate. We were estimating by just kind of drawing it in between all the middle of all the points. Here in ninth grade, we need to find the exact line of best fit, okay? So to do that, we're gonna need to use Desmos, okay? So we're gonna use Desmos to find the line of best fit. And to find the line, we're basically find. oh, I got spread, or I zoomed out here a little bit more than I wanted to, and that's zoomed in too much. So here we go. Okay, sorry about that. Um, and I'm going to adjust the pen size there. Okay, so to do the line of best fit, we need to remember what the equation for a line should look like. It should look like y equals mx plus b, right? Or this is a slope, and this is the y-intercept. Okay, that's where the line is crossing the y-axis. Okay, so we need both a slope and a y-intercept. Um, y and x are always there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Desmos here, and then we're going to go ahead and figure out what the slope is, and what the y-intercept is using Desmos. So let's go over to Desmos, and we're going to put in the data for this um, right here. Okay, here we go. So first things first, I'm going to put in the data that I just showed you. Uh, it was number two on page 183. But I'm going to put in the data for that problem by adding a table. And the top row is my X's, so I'm going to plug all those in. And that is important that you put it in in the same order that it is on your page because each of these X values have a corresponding Y value. They are points on a graph. Okay? There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah. Okay. So I've got in all my x values. Now I'm going to plug in the y values. So for y, I've got 77, 92. And this is just data for amount of hours spent studying and your final grade. Okay? So you guys can't tell there is a correlation between how much you study or how many assignments you do and what your final grade is. <laughs> Okay, and then 7B, no, 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 I did this out of order. 70, and then 63, then 90, then 75, then 84. Okay, now matches up. So to do the equation for the line of best fit on Desmos, I'm basically going to write, just write y equals mx plus b. But I have to do it in a specific way so that Desmos understands it. You'll notice the default on these tables is y sub 1, x sub 1. So if I want my equation to reflect these values up here, I have to use y sub 1. So to do the sub, you've got two ways to do it. You can do the underscore, that's shift and the dash button to go down, and then you can do the one. Or 
you can go to, let me move this out of the way, your little keyboard. And it is on this one, no. Maybe it's covered up by this and I can't move that. Well, I think there's a way of doing it there, but I can't see it. So just use the underscore. Um, Screencastify is blocking my screen. So underscore one, and then push over. So you're back up on the normal length. And oh, I forgot. We can't use the equals because um, we want the line of regression. So what we're going to use is the little squiggly mark here called sampersand or whatever it is called. It's the second option of that apostrophe next to the one, basically. It's on the keyboard here um, on ABC. It's down below where you can't see. <laughs> Freaking. Okay. So it is on the keyboard there. Trust me, if you look around, you'll find it. Okay. And then it's MX plus B, right? So M. And then I do X, but it needs to be this X up here, right? This X sub one. So I need to do the underscore one and push over and plus B and it will do it all for me. Now notice I don't see any of my points because they're all up in the 70s here, right? So I could zoom out and see them up here. There they all are. There's all my points. So you can see this is my scatter plots. Um, and then these are the important things I need down here, right? I need the M, that's my slope, 6.088. And I'm going to round to the hundredth just like I do everything here. So it would be 6.09. And then the Y intercept is 63.927, so 93. So back on my worksheet here, I'm going to go ahead and put those in for my equation. So it was, M was 6.09, and the B was, uh, and I've already forgot, I think it's 63.93. Okay, so 63.93. Now, when I do my line of best fit, it would be y equals, we're going to replace the m with what I got, so 6.09, oops, 6.09x plus 63.93. And that would be my equation. I'm done. That's, that's it. Okay, that is the answer for the equation. Now, it's going to ask me to predict um, how much uh, a student would get if they studied six hours. This is why we get the line of best fit. It can allow me to take data and extrapolate and determine or use it as a prediction for other things, right? None of these students studied for six hours, but we're going to try and guess what their score would be approximately using the data from these other students. So the number of hours they study is your x coordinate, right? So basically what it wants me to do is replace this x right here with six and then solve. So let's do that. y equals 6.09. 09 times 6 plus 63.93. And we're just going to plug that into our calculator. So 60, or sorry, 6.09 times 6 plus 63.93 is 100 and 47. Okay. So the expected grade would be 100.47. If it follows the same pattern as the other tests, um, to get 100% on that test, with a little bit of extra credit, um, 
you would have to study six hours. Okay? That's what it's asking. Okay, and then the last thing, the correlation coefficient. That is also on Desmos. That's one of the things that it gave us. So let's go back to Desmos here. And this R business here. Okay, so when it gives me uh, all this business with the R, that is a correlation coefficient. Not this R squared, but the R. Correlation coefficient is just basically how spread out your data is. Basically, it's like, are these things actually correlated? If they are correlated, they would produce a, like, pretty much a straight line with the dots. The straighter the line, the more they are correlated. And with the correlation coefficient, it's going to be some kind of number that ranges from negative 1 to 1. Okay? The closer it is to 1 or negative 1, the stronger the correlation, the more linear the data is. Negative 1 just means it's a negative slope. Positive 1 is a positive slope. Okay, that's why it goes from 1 to negative 1. And then the closer those numbers get to 0, the weaker it is. So from 1 to negative 1, with 0 being weak, 1 and negative 1 being strong. Okay, so 0 would be absolutely no correlation. They aren't related pieces of data at all. It's like your favorite color compared compared to, to your test scores. Like those aren't correlated um, pieces of data, right? They wouldn't reflect. Just because you like the color blue doesn't mean you're going to get 100% on a test. <laughs> okay, if only, right? Then everybody's favorite color would be blue. <laughs> um, but uh, basically, if we look at this data right here, it's pretty linear anyway, right? It forms pretty much a straight line. And if you look at this data, the correlation coefficient is 0.989, which would round to 0 0.99. 0 0.99 is pretty much one exactly, right? It's very, very close. It is not, um, it's much closer to one than it is to zero, right? So this is a very strong correlation. So when I'm answering this last question here, um, which was not on Chrome. This is a whiteboard. So the correlation coefficient was 0.99 when I round it, right? Which is a strong correlation. Now it asks if it's strong, weak, or no. Strong is basically 1 to like 0.7. Okay, that's a strong correlation. Weak, weak would be like 0.69 to like 0.4. And then from like 0 0.39 to 0 would be like no correlation. Okay, that's kind of the ranges that they're looking at for strong, weak, or no correlation. So um, if it asks you, uh, most of the data I think we give you in this unit is going to be strong because it's all going to be correlated somehow. It's kind of hard to get no correlation data. Like you have to really try uh, to get that kind of data. <laughs> Okay, and uh, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or concerns, let us know. And I'm all spooky here because my lights went out, but sorry. Um, if you have any questions, let us know. Uh, we're here to help. We want to help, and uh, I'll see you guys out there.